What's going on YouTube? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And you're watching the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, giving me them sweet old thumbs up and sending me them nice old comments. If you got a question for old Clayboy, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to answer all of them that I can for my subscribers for free. I can't help you with your baby mama drama or your money problems. Okay, I'm gonna do this as quick as possible. We have got a 2013 Ford Festiva. Should be the same from 2010 to 2017 to 18-ish flavor. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the thermostat. I wanna make special note that in my situation, I thought the thermostat was bad, but it actually wasn't. My oil cooler was plugged. I have other videos showing you that and me dissecting it, etc., etc. But we're going to get going on the removal of this thermostat, and I'm going to show you how to do it, nut and bolt. At the end of the video, I'm also going to show you a super neat trick on burping the coolant. That means you're going to get all of the air out of the coolant so your heat blows out super, super hot. And I'm also going to take a torch and show you how to see if the thermostat is opening and closing. It's kind of fun. Whenever jacking a vehicle up, on the bottoms of the doors, usually closer to the, the tires, you know, in this area, you're going to have what's called pinch welds right here. And we always want to put our jack where there is two or three layers of metal. And that is the portion that we're supposed to jack it up. It generally does look different than in the other portion of the metal running down there. You can jack it up here on the pinch welds. You just gotta worry, it's a little bit thinner metal right here. And jacking it as close to the tire and setting your jack stand underneath there is always the best practice. Now we're gonna take a 19 millimeter socket and remove the passenger side front wheel so we can get to the serpentine belts. Okay, so there's a special tool to remove these belts and install them they're called stretch to fit belts we don't have the tool it's on order but i think i've devised a way that we can do it we've got a 19 millimeter ratchet with just a regular screwdriver or anything we're going to put it in the behind the belt like this and as we turn the ratchet it will work the belt off of there There we go. Good eye. eye. Removing the belt with the screwdriver may damage it like it damaged this one. So using the proper tool is recommended. I think this belt is okay enough to use. We want to look on the inside of it, make sure it's not cracked in between the grooves. If I remember correctly, you can have up to eight cracks per inch to consider a belt good and usable. Now we need to take the coolant out of the inside of the engine. And to do that on these Ford Festivas, it doesn't appear that they have a drain petcock on the radiator. So we're gonna remove the lower radiator hose. But keep in mind that when you remove the thermostat housing, if the engine wasn't warm and the engine isn't up to operating temperature, the thermostat is gonna be closed, so you will have more coolant inside the engine. Make sure that you grab a catch pan to catch the coolant because animals love to lick this stuff up and we don't wanna contaminate the animals nor the ground. Okay, so these are called hose clamp pliers and they are the appropriate tool for removing what we in the shop call bitch clamps because they're a pain in the junk and you get to move that in there and once you clip them down they actually lock so they're really helpful once we get that back we take the hose pick and we stick it up underneath there we're trying not to poke out so we're going to go straight around and we're going to run it around the outside of the hose to break the seal on there if it's necessary if you're trying to remove the hose without hose pliers or a hose clamp pick tool you can usually take the hose and run it like this and move it around if you're gonna use the pick tool, you take the pick tool, you slide it up underneath there, and you just run it like this, and then it'll break that seal that's sometimes on there. Now I'm gonna take mine, and hopefully I'm gonna stick it up underneath here, and then it'll just go right down in my catch pan, and drain out a little bit of the coolant that's in there. 
Because we're gonna be removing the alternator for this procedure, we're gonna go ahead and take the 10 millimeter nut, loosen it up, and remove the positive side of the battery cable. Now the alternator is secured by three different fasteners, two of which are on the very top. This is a 15 millimeter bolt here, and this is a 15 millimeter nut right there. For this nut right here, mine is actually screwing out the whole thread with the stud, but if yours does not do that, you can either use what's called an E8, which is inverted Torx 8, or you could just use a regular 6.6 millimeter socket because it will be necessary to remove the whole stud to be able to get the alternator out of there to avoid hitting the air conditioning system. The optimal way of removing that stud would be the appropriate socket, but it just so happens that my E8 is missing. This way, you will not strip off the stud. Prior to removal of both bolts in the stud, I recommend we go right down underneath here and we loosen up the last bolt and remove it first. To loosen the last 15 millimeter bolt on the alternator, it's located approximately at the 605 to 615 position on the bottom of the alternator. I'm using a deep well 15 millimeter to loosen the bolt and remove it. Okay, with all the bolts removed, that'll give us access to the 13 millimeter nut that holds on our positive terminal cable that runs to our battery. And we can quite simply push down on this right here to release the electrical connector that goes into here. If you're having a difficult time removing the electrical connector, try pushing down on this and then pushing it towards the alternator itself and then sharply pulling it back very quickly. They generally will remove rather easily that way on any connector that you're working on on an automobile. Just so you folks know, I brung the alternator out of this hole right here. Well, it's nothing complicated or complex about it. Now, taking our catch pan and putting it underneath, These are also hose clamp pliers, and what they do is they allow you to get into difficult areas. So we squeeze this, and it actually locks and keeps the hose clamp locked so you can move it back down the hose. Now we can take the hose clamp, clamp pliers, set them on there with our mush mouth, and squeeze the pliers, and they will squeeze the hose clamp. Listen to that, squeeze. I'm making up my own words nowadays. So now I have them squeezed using both hands and the clamp is collapsed. I can actually set the pliers down and I can pull the hose clamp back and take it off of there. If it will stay clamped, I need to use two hands. Now normally I would remove both hose clamps while I have the hose clamp pliers out and I'm using them, but unfortunately, somebody's put this clamp on in such a situation I can't get the pliers in there to do it. You could possibly use like a pair of needle nose pliers or whatever and you could probably drag the hose clamp up this way. But now I'm going to take my pick tool and insert it inside my hose and remove this hose and then I should be able to easily get to that other clamp. Now I still wasn't able to get onto that clamp so I took my hose pliers or pick tool I mean and I just pulled it up a little bit. Because hoses are swollen more, generally on the end, you can take, once you release the, the clamp, you can take it and move it back towards the unit if the room allows for it. If you move it square, it will move down the hose fairly easily. Now on the housing itself, it has four eight millimeter screws, three of which I'm probably not gonna be able to make visible for the video. But I will show you the location and how I put my socket in there but the other screw is right here on the end of this housing and you put your finger down there and you run it down and you'll feel it. Do not remove this screw right here. And then the, another screw is right almost directly underneath it, but it kind of makes like a, kind of goes down on a little bit of an angle, pointed at approximately the five o'clock position. Then at the seven o'clock position, which is, you won't be able to see it, but directly underneath this little hole right here, there was going to be the fourth eight millimeter bolt. That one 
we're gonna have to figure out what kind of extension and stuff we need to put on it to be able to get the bolt loose and remove it. Okay, to remove the upper one that's to the right, we're gonna use a deep well eight millimeter with our ratchet, quarter inch drive. Removing the two lower bolts is gonna be done with this three inch extension and the deep well socket. Even though it's difficult to see, you can see that I've got my ratchet on the lower right eight millimeter bolt. Just for those rare occasions that someone has dropped a bolt and they can't find it, all four bolts are the same size, so you'd be able to take one to the hardware store. I know there's one or two people that are ever gonna watch this video that that'll be helpful for, but it's a lifesaver. <sighs> okay, so now with all the bolts out of there, we can remove it. We wanna make sure that we pay particular attention to this gasket that's on here. And somebody has used sealant on this thing, and that is not a good sign because we are definitely having a heating problem and there is stuff in there that I have never seen. I don't even know what that is. Probably like some silicone from the hardware store or something. Okay, so let's take a look at this thermostat housing. It sits on the engine just like so. This is the five o'clock bolt, this is the one o'clock bolt. I considered this the upper right, this is the upper left lower left, lower right, seven or six o'clock, technically six o'clock, and 10 o'clock. Okay, so quickly talking about this thermostat and how it works, on the inside of this barrel right here, there's wax. And as the wax melts at a certain temperature, the spring pushes open the barrel, which then opens the thermostat. We're gonna take this and give it a little test and see if we can actually make this thermostat open and close in front of our eyes. Look at that, would you just look at that? With it open like this, we can actually see the whole seal. And because of course, even if this was good, we still are gonna replace it because we've removed it. And we've also superheated it. Who knows how hot that thing got before it contracted. Okay, now I'm replacing the thermostat with the Motorcraft part number RT12111X. This is the appropriate part number, but you can use an aftermarket one. I do want to point out something. Now, whoever took this apart, one, they put this ceramic seal stuff in there, which is really bad for your cooling system, and more than likely the problem for my lack of heat. They've probably got it all in the heater core, and they've probably also got it all in the radiator. They also used silicone on gaskets that do not require silicone. All you have to do is take a little bit of perm, uh, like a petroleum oil. I use what's called Sil Glide here in the shop and using that for a long time. And this gasket right here is called your oil cooler gasket. And this gasket right here, it's not necessary to get a new one unless you can't feel a ridge on there and we can physically see the ridge. So we'll just take some petroleum or, you know, like a, a, a silicone based grease and we'll put it on the outside of here. Now in my situation, I'm gonna have to clean up both surfaces and you wanna do that. Just go into your wife's kitchen there or if your kitchen, if it's a female working on the car and make sure you put some Scotch-Brite on these surfaces to get rid of some of the electrolysis and stuff on there and then reinstall this. If you use silicone or like Permatex to adhere this, more than likely you will create a leak because you'll create ridges that are unnecessary. When these go inside there and this fits in there appropriately, it should seal it up. Anytime you're installing a thermostat, the button, the longer part, always goes towards the engine. And the reason for that is, is because the coolant is heated inside the engine and it heats up the end of this button and then that causes it to collapse just like we did with the heat. 
that is what the thermostat looks like when it's installed in there. Sometimes on some thermostats, there's a clocking to it for this little pen right here that allows air to escape, but I don't think there is in this situation. Okay, reinstalling all three bolts on the thermostat housing was easy. We had the 10 o'clock here, the one o'clock over there, and then the five o'clock, but the six o'clock bolt, a little bit tougher. So I'm gonna give you a little tip. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, grease, and I literally mean grease. You can use the dielectric. This is what I use to grease up the rubbers on the thermostat housing and the O-ring for the oil cooler. We put a little bit of grease in there and that'll help you hold your bolt inside your socket a little bit better. Check that out. The bolt doesn't even fall out. So now we'll be able to shove that puppy down through the center and get her started. Now to get that inserted inside that center hole, I was able to stick my hand right down through there and then took my other right arm and I was able to screw in the bolt to start it. One of the nice things about having these style hose pliers is you can put the clamp right on the hose before you insert the hose onto the fitting and push it on much easier than trying to drag the clamp down the hose. Okay, starting our bolts on the alternator is pretty simple. We just wanna make sure that we start all of the bolts prior to tightening any of them down. I put these two in on the top first and then took the third one right there, which allowed me to move the alternator up and down to get the bolt to start down on the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna use this Lyle tool to reinstall our belt. Obviously it's brand new. Um, it's supposed to install it and me and Dan are gonna show you guys how to do this. Here's the instructions on how to do it. It'll obviously come with the package and it's a 59370 if I'm reading that correctly. Okay, so we've got our belt up on our alternator, our belt ran underneath our water pump and our belt wrapped around our AC compressor and barely started to our harmonic balancer. Okay, so we've got our tool set in there and that notch is gonna push that on. We put our belt on as much as possible and we want it to stay around the edge. And Dan is gonna ratchet it, ratchet it clockwise. Hopefully this works. I don't know, I've never used this thing, so. Kind of a stupid design, if you ask me. I think they should have a, a stinking serpentine belt tensioner. And you just keep running that around until she pops out. And the belt pops off. She's on there. I don't like it, but that's on there for sure. Rotate it a couple times to make sure it walks itself right back on like it's supposed to. Make sure everything stays lined up. We're good to go. Hey kids, do you like Primus? No, I'm just kidding. So now what we're going to do is we are going to drill a hole in the uppermost radiator hose to the heater core. And the reason we're going to do that is so we can get all the air burped out of the system. This is a really neat trick and I've done it several times. And I want you to remember that only the Clayway shows you this really neat tricks. Okay, using something like a 964 or 1 8 5 30 seconds, we are going to drill a hole right here on the barb. Not drilling all the way through the hole is ideal to drill through the other side. Now when we push our hose on, it'll seal up. Now with the vehicle running, we're gonna start filling our overflow canister. As we fill it, we're gonna watch for air bubbles coming out of this hole. Once the air bubbles stop coming out and it comes out as a steady stream, we're gonna push the hose on all the way and then refill our overflow reservoir drum jug. We're going to use this to evacuate our extra coolant out of here because we want to keep it to the max line right here. And we're going to let the vehicle run for about five to 10 minutes up to operating temperature. 
so it pushes most of the air back in. Then we're going to put the cap on and ensure that we don't have any leaks underneath the vehicle. Well, hopefully you folks found that video to be interesting and you learned a couple little tricks that you didn't already know. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. If you would and I was helpful for you, please consider putting on one of my sweet playlists on the Clayway. Turn the volume down at night while you're sleeping and letting that sucker play from front to back. I greatly appreciate that. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to answer them for everyone that I possibly can. Remember, don't be the next to them. Be the first of you. And if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. God bless.